Hi everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Tiago Tuesday Talks, a series where I answer some of your questions that you placed down in the comments section below. Do you know what causes LEGO to determine if a new part will have an open top stud or FD textured closed stud? Actually, I don't know, there's like a whole team like working on new elements and there's like very strict rules to get new elements approved, so I, I really don't know the the specifics of why uh, pieces are designed in one way or in another. I've never had to design a new element when I was working for LEGO, so yeah, there's that. What set do you think is your best that isn't ship in a bottle? I really like the gingerbread house, but also the polybag of the pug. That was surprisingly a very challenging build because it's a polybag, but it's also a three in one model and there's lots of restrictions with the amount of different number of pieces that you can have on those so it was definitely a very challenging set that i had to design but probably one of my favorite either that or the gingerbread house when lego designs a set for an unreleased ip let's say the new avatar way of the water film how much info do the designers get about the film is it just concept art or actual shot scenes from the film from my understanding because i've never worked with an ip when i was working for lego uh, they do get like a concept art to to base their designs of i do know for a fact that like the star wars team gets the the concept art stuff to design the new ships so otherwise how could they do it you know it would be really hard to imagine but i don't think they get access to shots of the movies and stuff like that so i think it's like pretty much just concept art and maybe some some script or scenes uh, of the movies to know what what's going to happen so you know if they have to plan for like play features or who's fighting who they also need to have some sort of access to what happens in the movie. But I highly doubt that it's ac the actual movie or the actual shots of movies when they do need to, to do stuff like this. I know that LEGO pays some percentage of revenue to original designer of LEGO idea sets. Is that somehow the case for the in-house designers? No, not at all. LEGO model designers are, you know, employees of LEGO and they earn their salaries. Like, if there was such a system within LEGO and model designers would only pick to design the sets they knew for a fact that would sell really well or, or stuff that they knew that people would be really interested on, so... You know, that that would mess things up completely. If LEGO doesn't hire you as a set designer on your first try, can you reapply? Yeah, for sure. You can reapply as many times as you want. Of course, if you applied 10 times already and you didn't get a job, maybe that's a clear indicator that maybe lego doesn't want you or maybe you're not at that point yet but i've seen former colleagues like not getting a job on their first try but then reapplied and finally got it so yeah that's definitely something that you can actually do how many designers are there for any particular theme i guess it kind of depends on the size of the theme and what the theme needs to do with their products you know there's like small teams there's big teams there's there isn't really like a, a fixed number of model designers for each theme. It's like based on needs, you know? When I was working in Creator 3-in-1, we started off as like, or at least when I started to work for Creator 3-in-1, we were like six designers and eventually that number went up to eight or nine. When I was there, like the creator expert team only had like three or four designers, but I know for a fact that now they have like I don't know, almost 10 designers. So yeah, team sizes vary depending on the theme and the needs of that specific theme within LEGO. Do you think you can have 1 million subscribers on the main channel? I think I can. Uh, it will for sure take some time to get there, but I think we're on a good roll. So yeah, it'll take time, but I'm confident that I will be able to do it. Please subscribe. <laughs> What's up with Technic? I'm new here. My issue with Technic is, uh, if you've known me uh, for a while, you know that I usually don't keep uh, LEGO sets built uh, a lot of time, for long periods of time, so eventually I take them apart. But uh, a few years ago I had an experience where I had to take apart the big Technic Bugatti Chiron, and that's like almost a 3000 piece LEGO Technic set. And that was a painful, a really painful process so it took me like two or three nights to do it and then uh, my fingers were hurting for three or four days like 
taking pins out uh, from LEGO Technic sets it's, is really hard. It really strains my fingers. I was in pain and I decided to myself that I don't want to go through this again because eventually if I build a Technic set, which sometimes I do and I tried it out and it's kind of cool, you know, seeing the mechanisms and real functions work, uh, that's cool. But when I think about having to take the set apart, I'm completely like turned off about the theme. And also while building a Technic set, if you make a mistake, it's incredibly hard to go back and uh, fix your mistake. In a regular system set, you know, you take a few pieces apart and you fix your error and it's done. But with Lego Technic, you make a mistake and you only notice like 10, 15 pages later. In most cases, you will probably need to like take the whole thing apart because nowadays Lego Technic sets are so like sturdy and so tightly secured and well locked that a mistake will cause you in most times to just go back the whole build and do it all from scratch, which is something I also don't particularly enjoy. So I've tried building a few Technic sets. I enjoy them. I saw what the theme was all about and I'm done with it. So yeah, that's the thing with Technic. In your opinion, which is the best country to buy Lego in terms of price? I would say the US. I always see these crazy all videos on YouTube where people will buy Lego at insane discounts, like in these major retailers like uh, Target or some of those types of uh, retailers. And, and I think to myself, this is something that we don't get at all in Portugal. I also didn't see that kind of deals in Denmark. So yeah, I would definitely say that maybe the US is the best place to be to, to buy Lego cheap or get like really good deals out of your money. Você é brasileiro? Não, cara. Sou português. <laughs> what is your favorite Lego piece and favorite color of Lego parts? Uh, my favorite Lego piece is actually a very plain one. It's the one by two plate. I think I can't get enough of those pieces. I usually use them all the time in mocks and builds. So it's definitely like my, my favorite piece. As for colors, I really liked teal back in the day, but nowadays I kind of like the, the blue that I use on the profile picture of this channel and on my main channel. So I quite like that shade of Lego blue nowadays. I really don't know what's the official name to that. So it's probably like, I don't know, medium azure blue, perhaps. I don't really know, but that's, that's my favorite at the moment. What are your top three favorite Lego sets of all time? So number one is obviously the Titanic and number two, maybe the Saturn V and number three, hmm, the list changes from time to time, but I don't know, there's, there's a lot of strong contenders for number three at the moment. I love the DeLorean, I love the Lionite's Castle, I love the Tall Neck. Maybe I would say like the, the castle is, is a pretty neat build, lots of cool building techniques, hidden secrets and mechanisms and all of that. So yeah, that's, that's a solid third pick for my top three favorite Lego sets of all time. As an ex-Lego designer, can you still create mocks or sets or designs and post them in Lego ideas? Will there be any clash of interest or not fair since you're an ex-professional Lego player? Uh, so not really, I'm not, a Lego employee anymore and there's like specific clauses that uh, don't let you do that while being an employee of Lego, you know, to submit ideas uh, onto the Lego Ideas platform or uh, there's something along the lines of you not being able to get the, the percentage of the sales. I don't know the specific rules, but there's definitely a conflict of interest when you are an employee of Lego and you uh, submit a project to Lego Ideas. So yeah, since I'm not a Lego designer anymore, there's nothing to stop me from like uploading ideas into the Lego Ideas platform. I've actually uploaded one a few years ago. It was the Animal Crossing project. It got to 10,000 votes, but unfortunately it didn't get approved. I do have some ideas that I would like to, to put on Lego ideas that I think would be very strong contenders to becoming like Lego idea sets. But unfortunately, I do not have the time these days. So <laughs> I should probably find the time to do it. And, you know, maybe getting another 
Lego set under my bag. Are you going to make a review of the new Lego Lord of the Rings set? I would love to, but unfortunately I didn't get a review copy from the Lego Ambassador Network, so that was a shame, but probably when the set comes out I will buy it and I will make a review of it, because it's it was designed by my favorite Lego designer of all time, Mike Psyche, so it should be a very cool build. And also I'm a Lord of the Rings fan, so it should be interesting to finally have a set of the Lord of the Rings, because back then... I was like a broke college student, so when the first Lord of the Rings sets came out, uh, I didn't buy any because I didn't have any money whatsoever to spend on Lego. And I was probably going through some dark ages as well, so yeah, there was like a combination of factors that made me not having, at this moment, any Lego Lord of the Rings set, so when that one comes out, I'll probably buy it and make a review for you guys on the main channel. Please subscribe. <laughs> I'm curious, what's your favorite Ninjago Lego set? At the moment, that would be uh, Jay's Titan Mac. I think that's a really cool Mac and probably one of the coolest uh, building experiences, or at least Ninjago building experiences I've had. So, yeah. Have you ever thought of creating a Lego set? I have, I started and I dropped it. Nowadays, I don't feel like I have the space to do it in my studio, nor I would want to do it and I, w I I went a little bit into detail on that I think in my studio tour on the main channel so you should probably check that video out but yeah not at the moment I, I don't find enjoyment out of like having a massive city built on the studio like having to look at it every day and taking so much space and dust so it's very unlikely that I will ever do it. If I were ever to do it, it would be like custom models. I wouldn't be like displaying all of the modular buildings like most people have. I would like do custom builds and like making custom builds also takes a lot of time. So yeah, for all of those reasons, I will probably never do or never try to do a Lego City ever again. Sorry. Have you ever used Lego Light Kit? If no, did you think about it? Yes, I have used one Light Kit before. I think it was for the Ninjago City Garden set. And here's the thing, I think they look amazing when you install them in Lego sets and you turn them on, like it, it completely changes the Lego set. So in that regard, I find that light kits are super cool, but at the same time, I usually take apart Lego sets every now and then, and I will do that every time for every single set I own. So eventually taking the set apart with a light kit installed was a nightmare, at least that was my experience when I took a part in Ninjago City Gardens. So I probably will never get a light kit again, I think, because it's too much work to take it apart. How you clean your sets from dust? I actually don't, but I should because you know dust piles up really fast. But I do change the sets on display around a lot, so that's usually a problem I don't have to deal with a lot. But if I were to dust Lego sets, I would probably use like a, a big... Um, how do you call this? Yeah, I was missing the word. I would use like these very big brushes with like fine hair or something. I don't know how to explain this. But like smooth brushes, uh, big ones, to dust your Lego sets off. So if I were to dust off my lego sets, that would be the way to do it. What sets have given you the best and worst building experiences? And what icon style set do you really hope lego makes at some point? So, best building experience ever, the titanic for sure. I'm looking at it, it's like an amazing build. Even though it's like such a gigantic lego set, I feel it's been my absolute favorite uh, building lego experience ever. As for the worst building experience, and uh, there's a couple, but I would say maybe the uh, the Real Madrid stadium. No, not that one. The Barcelona stadium. Yeah, the Barcelona stadium was terrible. I, I really hate repetition on Lego sets. And that one was comprised of, you know, like 40 to 50 to 60 different sections built in the exact same way over and over and over again. It was my least favorite lego set to build ever and the second worst building experience is actually a set by my favorite lego designer ever mike psyche that was the grand carousel uh there were like times where the builds uh, had us building like 16 times and 
32 times or 36 times or whatever it was like repetition builds and that was ah oh, i hated it so yeah what i can style set i would like to lego make at some point i really like the optimus prime lego did uh, last year so maybe if they could continue doing like some transformers that actually transform in lego it's not an easy task, but if they could do it, I would love to see more of that, for sure. Have you ever been recognized in public? <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have. Um, but people have always been nice. Please do say hello if you see me on the street, uh, especially when I go to the Lego stores. Uh, that's the, the place where I'll be recognized the most. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't happen often. I live in Portugal, where my following isn't that big, I would say. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't happen often, but it has happened before. When you moved to Denmark, did you move there with your family? Yes. And if you did, LEGO provide support, economic and or logistic for the accommodation? Uh, yeah, so LEGO provided with some uh, relocation uh, money, so that helped with the initial settling in in Denmark, for sure. And there were also like some uh, services provided by LEGO to help find uh, housing which actually didn't work all that well and in the end i i have to do the house search for myself but yeah other than that they're very supportive and yes my family did move with me what did you do at the workshop in billen to get the job so the recruitment workshops uh, in billen is like one of the second or third stages of the recruitment process when you want to apply for a model design position so in there, I had to do like uh, drawing uh, tests, building tests, individual and in teams. And there's also like lots of interviews. So yeah, that's all I needed to do. And then you get evaluated on those. And then if you are successful, then they will call you to let them know that you got a job. And also if you didn't get a job. So yeah. Do you have to speak Danish to work for Lego? And what is it like to live in Denmark? You do not have to speak Danish. You actually need to speak English and that's the official language for the company. So that's a good thing. Also living in Denmark was, was really cool. It's a really relaxed country. I feel at least like in Billund and Vila where, where I was living. I really like the houses there. They were pretty warm when compared to houses in Portugal. So they're really prepared for, for the winter times. Summer there was actually amazing. I enjoyed it a lot more there than I do in Portugal because summers in Portugal can get really, really hot. Over 40 degrees Celsius, which is too much for me to take. So in that regard, it was cool. And yeah, it's the home country of Lego, you know. So <laughs> what's not to love about it? Why are there exactly 284 pieces for the water on the ship in a bottle set? Uh, I think I've answered this before, but it was like a request from the packaging theme. Uh, so before I had like 300, it was a really round number and I felt it worked well for the ship in a bottle design. But then the packaging team came to me and asked if I could take down the number a little bit uh, in order for make their lives easier in regards to the packing machines. So the packing machines that pack uh, Lego sets, you know, they, they count the number of pieces and for some reason it was easier for the machines to count 284 instead of the 300 and I was like, yeah, it's fine, it doesn't make that big of a difference, so yeah, that's why. That's it for today's episode guys, if you want to ask me anything, drop your questions down in the comment section below and I'll see you all in the next one. Three in a row, that's, that's good, we're on to something.